see a green car travelling along the road at around 50 kilometres per hour. And now we can see a red car travelling along the road at 100 kilometres per hour. a little suspiciously. I'll take some pictures. Okay, I have these pictures that have been taken every second and it really shows how the yellow van was moving. It's showing the distance along the road at each of the time intervals. If I draw a line through the middle point of the vans, I get a graph. A graph showing the distance uh, against the time taken. It's a distance time graph. Okay, well, we're now in the bathroom and we've got another type of distance time graph here this time the distance is the depth of the water in this bath this bath is archimedes bath and as it fills up archimedes gets in as you can see from the graph when he gets in there's a sharp change in the depth because of the water he displaces it looks like a vertical line. It's not quite a vertical line. It slopes slightly to the right. It can't be vertical. There can't be two depths at the same time. Whoa, the bath was just overflowing there, I saw. So the tap's been turned off and the depth's remaining constant. So the, the graph, the line of the graph looks quite flat, horizontal. Oh, now the plug has been taken out and the water's starting to leak away. So the depth is getting small the line is sloping downwards it's gone flat again the plugs back in so oh that sharp jump there was when archimedes got out of the bath and the plugs being taken out again finally so the last bit of the water can drain out okay now pause the video see if you can work out what happened on this occasion when Archimedes took a bath just by reading the distance time graph in fact I can tell you that the water started coming into the bath and he got in about here 20 seconds afterwards but then he very quickly got out again he must have forgotten the soap then he got back in when it was almost full and then it had a constant depth it wasn't getting fuller or emptier as this horizontal line shows and then he took the plug out and he got out at about 60 seconds and then the rest of the water drained away. So just by reading the graph, you can tell what happened. Now, we put straight lines in distance time graphs to make things easier. But actually, they should really be curves because things don't always change so smoothly. In this case, we have a race, a hurdles race, between Greeny, Ruby Red and Blue Boy. And Blue Boy is well in the lead. But Ruby Red is coming up and Ruby Red is about to overtake Blue Boy. Yes, Ruby Red goes into the lead and, oh, it looks like Blue Boy has actually stopped making no progress, even though the time is progressing. Oh, Greeny has just overtaken Blue Boy as well. Blue Boy is not running as fast as he was at the beginning although he has certainly picked up and it's going to be a very fast race at the end but blue boy has fallen at a hurdle again green is in the lead red is second and it oh greeny has fallen at a hurdle right before the finish line ruby red overtakes and ruby red wins the race with greeny in second and blue boy coming in third position oh but no blue boy just makes it into second place well it's virtually a tie for second place between blue boy and greeny so the key features of distance time graphs is that the the slope represents the speed the steeper the slope the faster the speed 
The horizontal line means that no progress is being made. The, uh, the body is standing still. And a downward slope means the object is returning to where it came from. Right, I'm going to have a go at drawing a distance time graph now for this situation. Alonso left his house and travelled to a restaurant which was five miles away from his house. The journey took him 30 minutes. Alonso stayed at the restaurant for 45 minutes and then travelled back home. And the return trip took him 40 minutes. So, I've worked out that I'll need 120 minutes altogether on my horizontal or the time axis. And then on the vertical axis, which represents the distance, um, I just need five miles because that's the furthest distance that he travels away from home. So I know that that, that five miles was completed in 30 minutes. So I can draw that blue line right there. And then he stays at the restaurant so that his distance from home isn't changing for that 45 minutes. And then finally, it takes him 40 minutes to get home. So from there, 40 minutes will be roughly there. Okay, I'll complete the distance time graph, showing the outward, the time at the restaurant, and then the journey back. So, what was his speed for the first part of the journey? Well, what we need to do is remember that the speed is the gradient of the line and gradient is worked out by dividing the rise by the run. So I've worked out that the rise is the five miles, that's the distance to the restaurant, and then the run is the time, which in this case is 30 minutes. So to calculate the speed, we do distance over time or rise over run. It's the same calculation, and that will give us the 5 over, well, 30 minutes is half of an hour. And I want to work in hours, really, to get a speed in miles per hour. So 5 divided by 0 0.5 is 10 miles an hour. That's the speed. Right, now, what about the speed for the return trip? So I'll do the same thing again. I want to work out the rise divided by the run or the distance divided by the time. Same calculation. So I'll make myself a little right angle triangle here on my graph. And I can see that the rise is again five miles and the run in this case is 40 minutes. So the speed is equal to rise over run or distance over time. And that will give me 5 over, well, it's 40 minutes. So I can actually use the degrees, minutes, and seconds button on the calculator to type in naught hours, 40 minutes as a time. And then I get the answer, 7.5 miles per hour. So that was how fast he came back home after refueling at the restaurant. Now, you may have heard of the word velocity to use instead of speed. Well, they're really both the same thing apart from the velocity includes direction as well. So coming back from the restaurant would be like a negative velocity. But anyway, a speed time graph such as this, the key features are that the gradient is the acceleration this time and the horizontal line means that the object is moving at a constant speed. So a downward slope does in fact mean deceleration. So let me draw one, a, a velocity time graph, for this story about Anne, who took her first ride on a new electric skateboard on a circular cycling track. From a stationary start, she accelerated to a speed of 5 metres per second in 10 seconds. She maintained that speed for 15 seconds, then accelerated to 10 meters per second in another 10 seconds. This was way too fast for her, so she came to a stop in another 10 seconds. So I've chosen a scale that seems reasonable to include all the times and the speeds. And then I'll plot the information in the question on the graph. So, constant speed is a horizontal line, which she maintained for 15 seconds. And then she accelerated 
until her speed was 10 meters per second. But as soon as she got to that really fast speed, she decided it was a bit too fast. So she decelerated um, down to a stop. Oh, I've just realized I haven't made my horizontal axis quite long enough. I need to add another 10 seconds on to the end. So here we go. She then decelerates down in 10 seconds to zero speed. So that is what the velocity time or the speed time graph looks like. So the acceleration, remember, is the gradient in this case. So what would be her acceleration for the, uh, the second section of speeding up? Well, I've got to work out the gradient. So again, it's rise over run. The run is 10 seconds and the rise is 5 meters per second. So the acceleration is rise over run, which in this case is equal to 5 over 10, which of course cancels down to be a half or 0 0.5. And the units for acceleration would be meters per second squared, or ms to the minus 2. So what about that, uh, the slowing down section? What was her deceleration? Well, I guess she put on the brakes for decelerating. And we can work out what the value of that was by again doing rise over run. So in this case... The rise is technically a negative rise. She's slowing down. So we can see that it's got a value of 10. And the run again is 10. So her deceleration is 1 meter per second squared or 1 ms to the minus 2. Finally, the area under the graph represents the distance traveled. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to split up the area into shapes that I know how to find the area of. Shape A is a um, trapezium. You can see it's got a pair of parallel sides and it's a four-sided shape. Um, so the area of a trapezium is the sum of the parallel sides divided by two multiplied by the distance between them. Then shape B is also a trapezium, but this time the parallel sides are the vertical sides. So again, the same formula. It's the sum of the parallel sides divided by 2 multiplied by the distance between them. And then finally, shape C is a triangle. The area of a triangle is a half base times height. Okay, so I need to work out all of these. 15 plus 25 divided by 2 multiplied by 5 is 100. And then 15 divided by 2, 7.5, 75, and then 50 at the end. So the total distance travelled by Anne on her skateboard was 225 metres. OK, now it's your turn to have a go at the online exercise. Don't forget to press the check button regularly as you're working through the questions to see if you're getting them right. And if you make a mistake, have another thing and correct your answer and then press that check button again. Don't forget to claim your trophy when you've got to the end. And there are lots more activities on the Transom website for you to have a go at to improve your mathematics and you can claim hundreds of trophies. So, what are you waiting for? Get going. Bye. You can find Transom Mathematics at www.transum.org, where you're welcome to use all of the activities absolutely free, or jump in with both feet and become a Transom subscriber.